right, guys, so here's a bit of a summary. Um, scores are given in Elon Musk's. The highest score you can get is five Elon Musk's. Mechanical resistance is a sad Elon. Uh, this is because the test was inconclusive. I've got to change my method. And they all failed the water spot test. Um, so that's why Elon's sad about that. Um, but to see how we got these results, keep watching. Good day guys, Keith here from Mirror Effect Detail here in Brisbane, Australia. In this video we're going to be going over some different ceramic coatings. One of them uses the graphene technology. I've not worked much with graphene before but I've done a lot of research on the technology and different coatings that use it. So I'm interested to see how it performs. We're also going to be installing a fireball ceramic coating, fireball butterfly and a cheap Chinese coating, uh, the Mr. Fix brand coating. In the video we're going to be going over slickness, chemical resistance, mechanical resistance, uh, we're talking about water spots, uh, temperature and hydrophobics and any other thing I can really think of. Um, so if you're keen to see more of these in the future, give us a subscribe or like us on Instagram or Facebook. Um, and if you have any sort of comments you want to make on my test procedure or if you'd like to see me test any other sort of particular brands let me know and um, with that said let's get into it hey guys we're going to start off with the slickness test here is fireball butterfly with the applicator cloth I used this has had maybe a month or so to fully cure the applicator cloth felt sort of like super glue had set in that was kind of like the texture Here's the graphene onyx coating. Has a bit of a yellow tinge after it's cured and on the cloth I mean, not on the panel. And very smooth. Here's the uh, Chinese Mr. Fix coating. Sorry the focus on the camera isn't the best there. Felt similar to Butterfly but just not as hard. So we're moving into the slickness test. I'm using quite a grippy sort of fireball applicator block. So the panel with nothing on it, very grippy as you'd expect. Onyx Graphene panel, uh, very very slick. I don't have the panel on much of a slope here. And the butterfly as you can see needed a bit of assistance to keep moving. Uh, moves here on the second attempt by itself. But against Onyx, Onyx is the clear winner here for panel slickness. Back to the panel with nothing, uh, very grippy. And the Chinese coating panel, again, very, very grippy. Um, the panel with nothing and the panel with the Chinese coating had similar levels of slickness. I think the Chinese might have just been a little bit slicker than the panel with nothing. But as you can see, Onyx, extremely slick. My favorite part of that coating is the slickness and butterfly medium slickness uh, not as slick as onyx but definitely not as bad as the nothing panel and the Chinese panel so onyx graphene pro here is absolutely the clear winner for panel slickness I would say butterfly easily second place and then it's barely third place for the Chinese coating Moving on to hydrophobics now, we'll begin wetting the panel. You'll see right off the bat the right hand side where there's no coating installed. Panel is very clingy, uh, the water is very grabby to the panel. Uh, in the real world this would cause a headache when it comes to the drying stage of the wash process as it's just way more effort needed to dry a car that has no coating installed. Um, there's also much more room for marring and scratching the paint as you're going to be contacting it more You're going to be using more microfiber towels and forced air is really not going to do much on a car with no paint protection Now I'll I'll pause this soon so we can have a bit more of an, an analysis of what's going on here So 
all the panels are, per are performing quite well. Now, in my eyes, looking at this, the Fireball Butterfly is definitely performing the best here. I've sort of circled in red dots all the little tiny water droplets that are continuing to bead and sheet off the panel. And in the yellow circles you can see the the same thing, the, the water droplets that are beading and sheeting off on the graphene panel. Now there's definitely not as much and there's quite a bit more powderiness to that panel. There's more sort of that powdery water uh, that is just going to sort of sit there and that's sort of the water that you'd need to manually wipe off with a microfiber towel. On the Mr. Fix Chinese coating, there's, there's really, that's really it. That's the final stage almost of, of water beading and sheeting. There's, there's no droplets anymore that are continuing to sheet off the panel. So I would give the Chinese coating a third place there, graphene in second place. Um, and Fireball Butterfly, quite impressive here with the hydrophobics. Um, first place for the butterfly. And as you can see on the right side in the brown circle, um, the nothing panel, very grabby, not slick at all. Um, no evidence of hydrophobics or water sheeting. So with that said, let's forget about the comparison for now and just take a, mo a minute to just sort of enjoy the hydrophobics that these, that these awesome coatings provide. So I'll let you guys judge here what, what you reckon is the best panel for hydrophobics. Uh, I'm going to go with Butterfly here. It definitely seems to be the cleanest panel after spraying it with water. And it definitely seems to um, bead and sheet those sort of lighter weight, um, smaller droplets of water um, as shown in that previous image compared to the other two coatings. Alright, moving on to the wash test. Nothing special here guys. We've just wash the panel about six or seven times. I might increase this to like 10 or 15 times next next test. And um, we're just using a pH neutral soap. We're not using much pressure each wash stage as you shouldn't when you're washing a your car. You should not use a lot of pressure. And um, nothing too much to say here. All the, all the coatings performed amazing. None of them lost any kind of as you'd expect, none of them lost any kind of durability or, or water beading or water sheeting after these washes. Um, now, I'll accept criticism that I haven't used the two bucket method here. I didn't feel the need because the panel's quite clean and it's tiny. Um, but fair enough, if, if you think I should have used two buckets. 
Um, so they all get a big green tick here, guys. No panel's really much better than the other. All of them performed really well and lost no durability. Moving on to the temperature test here, guys. Now, before we go too far into this, I need to explain a bit of a backstory. Um, there was a lot of hype behind the graphene coatings when they came out, and there still is, off over their water spot resistance. Um, I believed it myself as well, and I was, I was like, wow, I've got to get my hands on this technology. And a lot of people were attributing that uh, water spot resistance to this claim that by coating the panel with graphene, you effectively are going to make the panel cooler because the graphene doesn't conduct heat as much and uh, heat is a big factor in water spots as you bake on all that calcium and lime scale and um, that was the claim with well that was the claim some people were making with graphene so I'm testing here the temperatures of uh, the panels with the different coatings and, and, and the panel with no coatings I'm basically finding here guys that the claim that the graphene coating creates a cooler panel uh, compared to traditional ceramic coatings uh, is false um, all the coated panels are around the same temp um, there's not too much variance and um, what's cool to sort of see though is all the coated panels are a bit cooler than the nothing panel by maybe about a degree on average it, it varies quite a bit but um yeah so that's really cool to see so you do get a little bit of a cooler panel by coating it but once again the claim that the graphene technology creates uh, a cooler panel compared to traditional ceramic coat uh is false um i've i've seen that here and i'm i'm happy to test some more graphene coatings to to verify that further but um with that said, now let's move on to the water spot test and we can see firsthand how the graphene compares to uh, traditional ceramic coats with water spots. Okay, so nothing too uh, crazy here guys. Obviously to test water spots, uh, I'm just gonna let uh, some good old hard high calcium, high lime scale tap water to just bake on that car paint or on this test panel rather. Uh, now you definitely don't want to be doing this to your vehicle. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit hard to avoid and I'm trying to get equal coverage here and that's all we're going to do. We're just going to let this panel bake in the sun for about two and a half days. And we are back, and this panel looks terrible. Um, lots of just baked on lime scale and the rest. All the panels look terrible. Uh, there's no real sort of panel here where I go, oh wow, this, this, this coat has done really well. So we are going to wash this and then see how much of an improvement that makes. Um, the seal that I had... Uh, that plastic seal wasn't the best as you can probably tell so a little bit of water got in there as well something I just want to take the, the the time to say here as well guys I was recording with a camera and a GoPro now almost all my GoPro footage is in this very like fast sped up sort of uh, footage because I am an amateur and I've selected the uh, what's it called I've got my GoPro here I think it's called time-lapse setting and it's basically screwed up all of my footage. So on on the on the um on the GoPro. So I'll mostly be using the camera footage. So here's the panel post wash. Uh, the nothing panel probably looked the best to be honest. Um, all the coated panels, graphene and ceramic, look pretty much the same. Um, there's no clear winner here. They're all they all look terrible to be honest. And this is demonstrating the, the limitations with coatings in the fact that they are not a get out of jail free card that you can let hard water uh, bake on your on your paint uh, in the sun and there'll be no consequences there definitely will be 
the the claims that the graphene coatings are, are supposed to be you know water spot proof or, or, or better um, I'm just not seeing it the lesson from this is um, dry your car properly on to the mechanical test now uh, I'm gonna be honest with you guys this was a bit of a depressing test there was no real good outcome here uh, I started off using a Lake County orange pad with a uh, fine polishing compound in the form of CarPro Reflect. Same amount of compound on, on each panel, same polishing time. Actually, I used a little bit less polishing time on the Chinese panel because there's less surface area, but uh, it, it, equivalently, it's, it's around the same. Same pressure, same speed. Uh, I kept all the variables the same um, so that we could fairly judge the mechanical toughness of the coatings. And what I was hoping for is I would be able to see which sort of coating, when I, after I've polished it, uh, lost its water beating first or, or, or the most severely after this pass. The problem is they all lost their water beating after this pass and that really surprised me because I thought, um, I swear I've polished Butterfly before and it's still water beaded. Maybe, it, maybe after a day or two it self-healed itself um, with coating around it and melted in but here on this test panel I can clearly see that they've all failed. We've changed it up now, I'm using the bottom part of the panels uh, with a black pad which is even softer. I've reduced the polishing time. I think I may have reduced the polishing speed down to 2.5 and I've changed the compound from CarPro Reflect to Rupes DA Fine which I find is quite weak. Um, although I do need to play around with it a bit more. So I polish this Chinese panel for six seconds. The other two panels I go eight seconds. Again, with the whole, there's less surface area in the Chinese panel. Uh, the pad's getting blown out with an air compressor and, and wiped with a microfiber towel after each pass. So, you know, there's no remnants of old polish or clear coat or, or ceramic coat on the pad after each square. So we're polishing the onyx coating, two and a half speed, I think we go for eight seconds. So long story short guys, the the lesson learned here is don't get a ceramic coat thinking it's going to make the car bulletproof or super super scratch resistant, it's not. Um, if you want a lot of mechanical uh, you know, protection, you're going to need to go down a vinyl wrap route rather than a ceramic coat route, there's no chemical that will make the car like super scratch proof or super mechanically resilient. With that said though, ceramic coatings are indeed extremely chemically resistant and we're going to see that soon in the next uh, test topic. So after all that guys, we've cleaned all the residue off, the polishing residue, we've even done a one pass of isopropyl and we're going to wet the panels to see if there's any evidence of water beating on, on any of these and in my eyes um, there really isn't, um, they all look to sort of have lost all water beating, um, especially when you compare them to the nothing panel, it looks very similar. Um, you could argue maybe there's slight signs of water beating but really I'm not giving any winner here. Um, they all have really severely lost maybe all water beating so yeah on to the next test Alright, chemical testing. Yeah, exciting. So I gave you a little bit of a look there of some of the chemicals we're going to be using. 
Here's just a, like an initial sort of water beating check before we started using it with chemicals. Milwaukee air blower coming in really good handy here. So we're starting off 50% strength, all purpose cleaner. I let this dwell a bit. I don't actually manually wipe it in. I think I just rinse it off. But eventually we start manually wiping it in just to make it more like abuse. That didn't really affect any of the coatings too much at all. But don't worry, we're going to start ramping it up. Testing 50% uh, isopropyl alcohol. off again I don't think it really affected anything much maybe the Chinese panel a little bit maybe the Chinese is losing a bit of water beating yeah I'd definitely say it's lost a bit now we're um, using um, this javelin brand um, sulfuric acid based wheel cleaner now this is quite nasty stuff uh, you don't want to be getting it on your hands and I say that and I'm not wearing gloves uh, you definitely don't want to be breathing in too much and you definitely don't want to be getting this stuff in your eyes on the topic of wheel cleaners guys, what do you guys use? Um, uh, there's some really nasty wheel cleaners out there. Um, some even use hydrofluoric acid, which um, I don't know if you guys know much about hydrofluoric acid, but it's a very nasty chemical. It doesn't even need to be inhaled or anything, like it literally absorbs through your skin into your bones and like affects the calcium or whatever. And I've, I've heard some horror stories with some people at the mines needing to get limbs cut off because they've been exposed to like too much of the HF acid. So I definitely stay away from any HF based wheel cleaners. Even if it's just, even if they've only got like a tiny amount of it. So after this we're rinsing it. Um, I would say the Chinese panel definitely took a, a, again a bit more of a beating. It looks like it's starting to lose a lot of integrity there. I think the graphene a little bit as well. Fireball butterfly is, is really holding out well. I'll probably stop using this mist function in future videos because it kind of um, falsely gives the idea of beating when it just sort of... You can almost make a panel with no coating on it look like it has water beating with the mist function. Uh, we're using this, the Oomph brand sticker residue remover here. Now this uses a um, ingredient called D-limoline. I don't know if I pronounced that right, which is a really powerful citrus based solvent. Amazing product, by the way. If you do want to remove sticker and um, sticker and like glue, uh, goo residue and stuff, really good product. And we're actually wiping this in. Uh, this definitely hurt the Chinese coating. Um, graphene still holding in there, and butterfly is definitely staying in there. Even with the mist function, I think the graphene and the Chinese coating there, the, the, the beads didn't look quite circular, they looked like a bit weak. They didn't look like that really strong circular, stereotypical nice bead. We're giving CLR at 100% strength a go here guys. I haven't actually tried CLR before to remove water spots, I wonder if it actually works any good. I'll have to try that one day. We're giving it like another go. Alright guys, we're moving on to some GoPro footage here. I've lost a lot of footage off my DSLR. But luckily I was also recording with this GoPro. Unfortunately with this dumb time-lapse setting, but 
in any way, it's better than nothing. Uh, we're rinsing away the CLR. Good water beating still on Butterfly. The other two are starting to lose a bit of integrity. We're putting another round of sulfuric acid wheel cleaner on. We're going to wipe this off. We're being pretty aggressive now with the wiping because I just kind of want the coatings to fail so I can wrap this up. First time of fireball water spot remover. Pretty strong chemical. It dissolves, you know, calcium and lime scale. We're rinsing that off and zooming in here. The fireball butterfly, again, really nice circular beads. Onyx and Chinese starting to really lose those nice circular beads. Another go with the APC, half strength, wiping it in. Again with the water spot remover. Very strong chemical, guys. Again, I should be wearing gloves. Hey, we're getting the gloves on, boys. 100% full strength APC, two times applications here. Quite strong stuff. And we're just powering through this GoPro footage until we get back on with the DSLR footage. Um, I lost like about 20 minutes of, of film, so we're just going to have to go with this GoPro footage in the really high speed mode that it's on. Again, I am recording this on the DSLR, but I've just lost the files. The problem actually arises when you have the same file name on the DSLR and then you import it in the same folder in Windows and then it asks you, do you want to override files? And then I, I clicked yes, like in like a pelican. Here's a zoom in, guys. You can see nice sort of circular water beating still on the butterfly. Chinese cutting's completely gone and the onyx is still there, but it's in a very compromised spot. As you can see, none of those really nice sort of circular water beads anymore on, on the onyx. If your car ever got to that point, that's you need to recoat. Or at the very least, just put a topper on to, to regain that water beating. So I'm giving it a bit of a wash here just to re remove any residues. Um, the butterfly I just can't really seem to kill, like uh, it just wouldn't die. If you guys have any recommendations on chemicals I can use that are really strong, let me know. Uh, the Chinese coating is absolutely gone. Onyx is like hanging on by a thread it seems. Eventually I just stopped spraying the, the Chinese coating panel because it, it's just gone, so I'm just wasting chemical. And I just sort of focus on the butterfly and the onyx.
much more to much, not much more to say here. We're just continuing putting on that 100% APC. Giving another go here with the wheel cleaner. I'm just really trying to like end the life of these coatings so I can wrap this up, but they just they just don't sort of seem to die. I'm really rubbing these in hard now too by the way, I'm, I'm putting quite a bit of pressure, quite a lot of repetitions of wiping, which you normally wouldn't do. I'm even doubling this up with some water spot remover after the sulfuric acid. Wiping that in, doing lots of circular motions, and hell, let's just give another go with the APC. Rubbing that in, doing everything you shouldn't do to your car. And why stop there? Now we're hitting it with the uh, sticker residue remover. I, I hope it doesn't need to be said, but just in case it does, guys, don't actually do this on your own car, for God's sake. But look at that! Look at that! Look at that fireball butterfly panel! Like it's ridiculous. Look at those water beads after I've just molested it with all those chemicals. Um. Yeah, it's I can't I couldn't really believe how like chemically resistant the but fireball butterfly was. Onyx has slightly still got some kind of ceramic presence there, but there's you know there's really not that nice water beating. Um, so this is the final one, guys, and I just packed it up after this. I gave up. We're putting a hundred percent straight acetone on, uh, also known as like nail polish remover. Trying to get good coverage so the acetone contacts, you know, every bit of square inch of the panels. I just put it on the onyx and the butterfly because the Chinese panel is already gone, so I'm not going to waste any on that. And uh, yeah, we're what we're rinsing it off, and what do you know? Fireballs like, is that all you got? Um, Onyx is again at that stage. You know, there's probably still some protection there, but you'd you'd really want to recoat or top that up or something if that was your car in real life. So with all this said guys, Butterfly definitely has really impressed me here. Um, I'd definitely give the victory to Butterfly here in the chemical test. Second place to Onyx. Um, and then third place to the Chinese coating, which uh, failed fairly quickly. But in saying that, it's a very cheap coating. And, you know, it's done fairly well given the price, I'd say. So I'm just doing a bit of a final wet down here. Um, still blown away by the beating on Butterfly after all of that abuse. Uh, let me know again guys if you have any thoughts on this video or comments. Um, what I should test next. Uh, what I should change. Um, again you can sort of see this sort of tadpole effect on the water coming off like the, the spray on the butterfly and the other panels just sort of are very flat. You can just really tell they've lost almost all the water beating. And just as a final sort of thing on the applicators, I threw these through the washing machine just to see how that would affect the texture of the applicator cloths. And it didn't really affect them at all. They all sort of felt the same as when they just cured without getting thrown in the washing machine. So I guess you guys are probably wondering why I'm putting applicator cloths through the washing machine. Um, mostly because of curiosity. 
I've put other applicator cloths through the washing machine with say Fireball Ultimate Nano Coat or other kind of coating brands and the cloth comes out really smooth as though there was no coating ever on it so it, I don't know if it means much but these coatings still having that sort of hard texture that crystal sort of f uh, hard feel on the applicator cloth after being sent through the washing machine tells me I guess that maybe there's something chemically different about them to make them more you know resilient and longer lasting and, and, and more um, just more durable so take that as you will. So final thoughts on this guys. Very fun exercise to do. I've learned quite a bit doing it which is really going to help me you know convey with customers what they can expect with different coatings. The Onyx Graphene Pro coating, the highlight of that coating was definitely the slickness to me and it was just an all-around good coating um, and just a bit um, some people might prefer coatings that flash quicker as well um, in the application of Fireball Butterfly it's definitely got a slower flash time so there's more of a wait before removing and leveling the coating uh, with that said on the note of Fireball Butterfly very very impressive hydrophobics and extremely impressive chemical resistance the Chinese coating, Mr. Fix brand, um, it did fall short in all of the tests compared to the other two. But in saying that, um, it's extremely cheap. So people that are on a you know very low budget that they still want something on there, uh, it could definitely be a viable option. So um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had fun making it. I want to do more of these. If you guys have any comments on which coatings I should do next or um, anything else that I should swap up or switch up let me know and until then I'll see you guys next time